Hi, I'm Michael Jones. I'm one of the pastor teachers at the Orange View Church of Christ in Orange County, California. Um, our congregation's been impacted by the coronavirus event and have been requested to remain and practice social isolation. So keeping with that, I've been broadcasting from remote locations around the world each day. And today I'm broadcasting from Victoria Falls right here in Zimbabwe. Victoria Falls is the largest waterfall in the world. It's right out in the middle of the jungle um, here in Africa and very isolated. So no problems with that. Yesterday, we took a look at what it means to give mercy. Today, we're going to take a look at the other side of the equation, what it means to receive mercy. I'm going to take us back into the Gospels in Luke chapter 5, starting our reading at verse 12. It says, While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Now, the way the New Testament is arranged, there are four Gospels. There's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which we call synoptic Gospels. And then there's the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, in large part, covers just the last week or so of Jesus' life and ministry. But Matthew, Mark, and Luke are what we call synoptics. They cover the whole story of Jesus on a more comprehensive level. This account of the cleansing of the leper is recorded in all three of the Synoptic Gospels. Surely there is a specific lesson that the Lord wants us to learn from this particular encounter. And I'll tell you that one thing that we learn from this is the leper becomes an example of the way in which a sinner approaches the Lord in order to obtain mercy. Let's take a look at how it is that he came. First, recognize that the leper came to Jesus with a very deep sense of personal need. He was a leper, and therefore, according to the law, he was unclean, corrupt, and defiled. He would have been an absolute outcast of society. In fact, notice that Luke's account emphasizes that he was full of leprosy. Now, to really appreciate the situation this guy is in, I want you to consider what his life would have likely been like. There would have been a day that he woke up and discovered this awful thing on his body. He probably worried about it for several days until he decided he had to do something. Packed up his bag, went off to Jerusalem, went into the temple, and when he went into the temple in Jerusalem, he would have found a priest. He would have gone to the priest and pointed out, likely, these little spots all over his body. The priest would have been careful not to touch him. And then finally, using Leviticus 13, 45 and 46 as his guide, the priest probably told him something like this, I declare before God that you are unclean. The leprous person who has this disease must wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose, and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, Unclean, unclean. And he shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling will be outside the camp. So just consider what that would have been like for this man, being declared unclean and then having to tear his clothes right there where the priest had made the declaration. When he got back to his village, he could have seen his wife and child running up to him, to which he would have to tell them to stop and stay back and again warn them that he is unclean. This man would never be able to go home he'd have to live outside of the camp. His whole life was essentially over. And so Luke 4 says, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. That's this man. Now leprosy is what medical people today refer to as Hansen's disease. The Jewish people feared this because it made you a complete and utter outcast from society. Well, this leper came to Jesus in a great act of humiliation. The Gospel of Mark in the parallel account says that he came kneeling before the Lord. Luke says he fell at his face at the Savior's feet. He fell at his face and, and told him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, there's a sense in which leprosy is presented in the Bible as a symbolic event. It is largely symbolic for the nature of sin. Just like leprosy comes upon a person first in a small sense and then engulfs and ruins the entire individual, sin does the same. 
it often starts out small and then grows and grows incessantly until it destroys the individual who it attacked. Remember, the scriptures tell us clearly, the wages of sin is death. So the parallel between leprosy and uh, sin is pretty clear to see. This man also came to Jesus confessing a true faith. Notice how he acknowledges Christ. He called Jesus Lord. When he called Jesus Lord, he acknowledged him as who he was. There's another aspect of his request that also acknowledges who Jesus was, but you might not notice it initially. He came to Jesus and said, If you are willing, you can make me well. Well, the Jewish people were very familiar that the only person who could heal an individual of leprosy was God. So for the leper to call Jesus one who was capable of cleansing him of his leprosy, he was confessing Jesus also as being divine. This becomes an extraordinary act of faith on the part of the leper. He comes to the right person with the right request and the right spirit of heart. He comes in a humble attitude, seeking salvation from the Lord. A well-known story is told by Margaret Powers about a man who dreamed that he was at the end of his life. And as he saw his life, it was as though they were walking along a beach together with the Lord, just he and Jesus moving along. As he looked back over his life, he saw two sets of footprints in the sand along most of the way. One set belonged to him, and another set belonged to Jesus. He noticed, though, at many times along the path of his life, there were only one set of footprints in the sand. And he noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. Well, this really bothered the man, and so he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that you would never leave me or forsake me. You said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most difficult times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would leave me. And this man in his dream, Jesus looked back to him and said, My son, I want you to know that I love you and I would never leave you. Look at those footprints. During those times of trouble and intense suffering, the footprints that you saw were mine. I was carrying you at those times. It's important for us to realize that in our own life, when we go through the most difficult of times, God is always with us. We should never doubt his presence, even though you can't physically see him. Um, at times, you would recognize the promise of God is true. He said, I would never leave you or forsake you. You should contemplate that in your own life. What kind of faith do you have in the Lord? Have you put your faith in him to cleanse you of your sin? Did you go to him looking for salvation? And if so, are you daily living with faith together in the Lord? Hebrews 11.6 reminds us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. If you need victory or cleansing from sin in your life, let the Lord do that. In Psalm 34 and verse 18, the psalmist says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. David, in his well-known penitent psalm of Psalm 51 and verse 10 said, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. John, in 1 John 1, in his epistle, somewhat closing out the New Testament, says that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. When we look at the leper in this story, for many people, they would have seen that man and viewed him as a failure. He was failing in his health. Death was so near to him, he could probably feel its cold breath breathing down on him every day, saying, I'm coming for you. Every day, he would have looked at his reflection in a pool of water and seen his life drifting away. This man was a man who struggled a lot. He knew that he needed the Lord in his life. So he went to Jesus and asked for help. We need to make sure we do the same. It doesn't matter what area of life you're struggling in. Maybe it's with your health. Maybe it's with your finances or a relationship. Whatever area of struggle you have, also, you can come to the Lord and receive help and assistance with that. 
God loves you more than you'll ever know. You may not have leprosy like this man, but your situation may be similar. Come to the Lord in faith and let the Lord fix your problem as he's prone to do. Well, as you go through your day today, I hope you find these thoughts helpful to you. Remember, take your needs to the Lord, for he cares for you, and walk with him earnestly in faith each and every day. I hope that's helpful. I'll see you back again tomorrow from another isolated location.